Hi there! I have two stories to read to you today. My first one is the night before St. Patrick's Day. And the second is Curious George visits the zoo. You ready? The Night Before St. Patrick's Day by Natasha Wing, illustrated by Amy Wommer. Twas the night before St. Patrick's, the day to wear green. See, we have March 17th every year. Not a creature was stirring, except Tim and Maureen. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Who's that? They decked out the den from ceiling to floor with streamers and rainbows and shamrocks galore. Later, they carefully made traps with gold charms and rings. I bet we catch a leprechaun. They love shiny things. For if they caught one, so the legend told, they'd find where he buried his big pot of gold. Who's hiding behind the yarn? How to catch a leprechaun. Shiny ring, pull string. So they have a plan. They set all the traps round the room with great care in hopes a wee Irishman soon would be theirs. Shiny treasure inside. Lucky leprechaun slide. The children then nestled all snug in their beds while visions of gold coins danced in their heads. Happy St. Patty's, said dad early the next morning. Then he started to play bagpipes without warning. He huffed and he puffed an old Irish song. Mom dished out green eggs and sang loudly along. <laughs> Looks like their pup is singing too. When from their bedroom there arose such a clatter, the kids ran down the hallway to see what was the matter. And what to their wondering eyes should appear? But a terrible mess! A leprechaun was here! Be quiet, whispered Maureen. He's hiding somewhere. When we find him, remember, we must hold his stare. For if you look away, if you so much as blink, leprechauns vanish quick as a wink. The kids trailed muddy footprints back and forth across the floor. Which led them under Tim's bed and past the closet door. And then inside a trap, they heard someone giggling. A real live leprechaun. They both saw him wriggling. His eyes, how they twinkled, his body so tiny. His hand clasped a trinket so golden and shiny. He was dressed in all green from his head to his toes and he looked like a cobbler wearing fairy sized clothes. The children approached him, staring straight in his eyes. Tell us where the gold is. Don't be tricky, no lies. I buried it under a rock, smooth and hard. It's marked with an X right in your backyard. Hmm. But when the kids went outside with their shovel and pick, they instantly saw it had been a big trick. Look at all the rocks with X's. Clever little leprechaun. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Ha ha, I fooled you. It's time to disappear. Happy St. Patty's Day to you and better luck next year. What a tricky leprechaun. That was the night before St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Curious 
Prince George Visits the Zoo by Margaret and H.A. Ray. This is George. George was a good little monkey and always very curious. One day, George's friend, the man with the yellow hat, said, How would you like to see a real elephant, George? Let's go to the zoo. There was a lot to see at the zoo. There were the giraffes with necks so long they seemed to reach the sky. And the kangaroos carrying their babies in special pockets. And finally, there were the elephants with their floppy ears and their long trunks munching on hay. It was lunchtime and George was starting to feel hungry. He saw people enjoying their lunches on park benches and others picnicking on the grass. I'm going to find out what time they feed the lions, said the man with the yellow hat. Please wait here and try not to get into any trouble, George. While George was waiting, he saw a zookeeper with a pail of bananas for the monkeys. The keeper put the pail down to get a drink at the water fountain. George was hungry, so he grabbed the pail and ran away with it. Hey, shouted the keeper, stop that monkey. But George kept on running. There was a crowd of people standing near the monkey house. This would be just the place for George to hide. Standing by the cage was a little boy holding a red balloon with a long string. All of a sudden, one of the monkeys reached out and snatched the string from the boy's hand. The monkey took off with the balloon and climbed to the top of the cage. But when he tried to squeeze the balloon through the bars, it was too big, and the other monkeys started to shriek and scream. The little boy started to cry. Please, can somebody get his balloon back? asked the mother. But none of the people could reach that high. George knew what to do. With the pail in his hand, he climbed up to the top of the cage. He took a few bananas and fed them to the monkeys. While the monkeys were eating, George snatched the balloon and swung down from the cage. He handed the balloon back to the boy. Just then, the man with the yellow hat came running. George, the man cried, I have been looking everywhere for you. Please don't be angry with him, said the mother. He saved my son's balloon. George had saved the day, but he was still very hungry. Now it's time to feed ourselves, George, said the man. And that's what they did. Curious George Visits the Zoo by Margaret and H.A. Ray. Oh, 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 oh,